Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial system. We have x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed equals negative 1, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 0, and x plus y plus z is equal to 2. And I'll be presenting two methods. We're going to talk about something that is very helpful if you are studying algebra, especially polynomials. So first of all, I want you to notice that if x, y, and z are real numbers, then from this equation, we get something interesting. The sum of squares can only be zero if the numbers are all zero or if some are negative and some are positive. But if x, y, z are real or if some of them are real, their squares cannot be negative. In this case, we have a single solution, x equals y equals z equals zero, right? But you'll soon realize it's not possible because of the first and the third equations. So that gives you something, doesn't it? Let's go ahead and proceed because the solutions are going to be pretty interesting. Now, first of all, I'd like to take x plus y plus z with my first method. I want to square it because I do have the sum of squares. So this can be written as x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus 2 times xy plus xz plus yz. Now, we do know that x plus y plus z is equal to 2, and x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 0. This gives you what? 2 squared equals 4, therefore this is supposed to be 2. Make sense? Okay, so from here we get another equation which is going to be very helpful. xy plus xz plus yz equals 2. Okay? So let's go ahead and save this for now because we're going to use it in a little bit. Now, I'd like to get something else, and that something else is actually the product. With these kinds of systems, a lot of times getting x, y, z is a good thing, if you can, of course. And to get that, I'm going to use another identity. Hopefully, you are familiar with the cubic identity. If not, don't worry about it because I'll show you what it is. So, x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed minus 3xyz is actually factorable. It doesn't look factorable, right? But it is. And it actually contains x plus y plus z as a factor. One of the factors is x plus... I don't know what is happening with this notability thing. Sometimes it just acts weird. Anyways, x plus y plus z. And then the other factors, are, are obviously that's supposed to be quadratic. And it's going to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared. That will kind of give you x cubed, y cubed, z cubed, right? But also you have to subtract some terms minus xy, minus xz, minus yz. There's a lot of different things you can do with this, the AMGM stuff, you know, lots of other identities. We're not going to get into those because that's a whole different story. But here, what's really significant is that we actually know a lot of things. For example, we know the sum of the cubes is negative 1. Remember that? And we do know that the sum is equal to 2. We also know that the sum of the squares is 0. But not only that, we also know this stuff. Notice that everything is negated, so it's just going to be the opposite of 2, which is negative 2. You see, we have so much information, and all that will be used to find x, y, z. Let's go ahead and uh, simplify our work. Negative 1 minus 3 x, y, z equals 2 times 0 minus 2. Okay, that's going to be 0, right? 0 minus 2. Actually, that's not going to be 0. 2 times 0 minus 2. So it's going to be actually negative 2. Yes, exactly. So now from here we get negative 4. And if you put the negative 4 on the left-hand side, right here, and this one on the right-hand side, you're going to get 3 x, y, z equals 3 and x, y, z equals 1. How nice, right? Everything has been arranged so that the answer will be nice. Great. At this point, here's what you would like to do, or I would like you to do, hopefully. We have this, we have that, right? And this is equal to 2, I think. And we also have x plus y plus z. So what does this tell you? If you say Vieta's formulas, that's good. If not, then let's talk about it. So Vieta's formulas basically gives us the relationships between the sum, the product of the roots, and the coefficients of a polynomial equation. For example, if you have ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, which is the quadratic equation, and the roots are x sub 1 and x sub 2, then 
we do know from Vieta's formulas that x sub 1 plus x sub 2 is negative b over a, and x1, x2 is c over a. How do you prove this, right? Well, easy. You can just set this equal to a times x minus x1 from factor theorem times x minus x2, and then equate the coefficient, so on and so forth, you'll get the same result. But there's something nice about this, is that you can work backwards. So if you know the roots, you can write the equation. So how do you go from the roots to the equation? Let's go ahead and talk about that. So if the roots are x sub 1, x sub 2, and x sub 3, let's go ahead and focus on a cubic equation. Then, and let's not use x, let's use t as a variable, t cubed, and then you're going to put the sum here. Of course, that's going to be with the t squared. And then you're going to put the two-way sums, x1, x2. In other words, I think I'm going to write this with xyz, which makes more sense. So suppose the solution set is xyz, then I'm going to use a t. My equation is going to look like this, t cubed minus x plus y plus z t squared. And then I'm going to use xy plus xz plus yz. That'll be multiplied by t. Notice that the signs will alternate, plus, minus, plus, minus. And finally, with a minus sign, I'm going to have my constant x, y, z equals 0. So this is the equation whose roots are x, y, z. Make sense? Let's go ahead and replace these with numbers, because we do know x plus y plus z is equal to what? 2, right? This was also 2, and this was equal to 1. We just found it, right? Remember with the cubics? We did find x, y, z. Great. So we just replaced those. And now I get the following equation, which is super awesome. t cubed minus 2t squared plus 2t, or not 2t, minus 1 equals 0. And this equation is actually solvable easily by factoring. Let's go ahead and put the t cubed minus 1 together and then factor out a negative 2t. So now we can factor this by difference of 2 cubes which is going to give us t minus 1, t squared, plus t plus 1. And then, of course, this is supposed to be subtracted by 2t because t minus 1 is now a common factor. Make sense? I hope it does. Equals 0. Forgive me for skipping one step there. t minus 1, and now the second factor is going to be t squared minus t plus 1 equals 0. And guess what? First factor gives us t equals 1 right away, which means x, y, z can all be 1 but that's just one of the values. The second equation, which is the quadratic, gives us interesting stuff. Actually, if you solve it using the quadratic formula, you're going to get 1 plus minus square root of 3i over 2. And guess what these are? These are actually complex cube roots of negative 1. Except for negative 1, that's excluded. Okay? You could also write these in polar form, but if you want more details, go ahead and check out my other channel, which is a plus bi, conveniently named, right? Okay, so those are going to be the solutions. And obviously, this means t can be x, y, or z. So in other words, I can basically say that, okay, x, y, z as a set is equal to 1 e to the power i pi over 3. I hope I didn't get it wrong. 5 i pi over 3. All right? So that's going to be my solution set, which means x, y, z can interchange. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the second method, because second method is also fun. All right, for my second method, I'm going to go ahead and take the quadratic and take the linear sum, and it's going to become zero, because the sum of squares is zero. Remember, that was given, right? This is zero. Okay, great. Now, let's go ahead and distribute. We're going to get, when we distribute, we're going to get something like x cubed, y cubed, z cubed, and then we're going to get something like this. x squared y plus y squared x plus x squared z plus z squared x plus x squared oh no it's going to be z and y so like y squared z and z squared y okay and that's equal to zero now be careful we know this this is equal to negative one but we can do something about this factor these in groups of two you're going to get x y times x plus y xz times x plus z, and then yz times y plus z. You see the pattern? Equals 0, which means this whole thing is equal to 1, but I can write it in a different way. How? We know that x plus y plus z is equal to 2. So x plus y can be written as 2 minus z, great. This can be written as 2 minus y, and this can be written as 2 minus x. Let's go ahead and distribute. Now we know that this is equal to xy times 2 minus z 
plus xz times 2 minus y plus yz times 2 minus x and that's equal to 1 because negative 1 plus that equals 0 right now how do we work this out easy look at this 2xy 2xz 2yz so 2 times xy plus xz plus yz this is why I love algebra because it's just amazing minus xyz minus xyz minus xyz is going to give you minus 3 xyz does that look familiar you've seen that before and now we can go ahead and find xyz from here because xy plus xz plus yz we know that it's equal to 2 from the first method we just cheated okay 4 minus what equals 1 the answer is 3 so xyz is equal to 1 and the rest is the same all right and this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Oh, by the way, one thing I wanted to talk about. If you don't want to use, if you don't want to use Vieta's formulas, suppose we have the following system, right? Now, this is what we ended up with. I think this is the most critical part. So your goal is to come up with something like this. And how do you solve it if you don't like Vieta's formulas? That's perfectly fine, right? Here's what you can do. And this is really cool. I'm going to go ahead and just do the following. From here, I want to, first of all, I want to isolate one of the variables. So let's go ahead and take the second equation first. Okay, how about that? I want to factor out a z. That's going to give me z times x plus y equals 2. And for x plus y, I'm going to isolate x plus y and write it as 2 minus z. And we used this technique before, but we're not using Vieta's formulas. And now I'm going to go ahead and replace z with that. What am I going to do with x, y? Easy. That's going to come from the third. You can replace x, y with 1 over z. And then that'll do the trick. And you're all set. Take a look. We're going to be getting 1 over z plus z times 2 minus z equals 2. And guess what? When you simplify it, this is going to turn into a cubic equation. Good luck with that. And this brings us to the end of the series. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.